Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and I'm the Black Powder Editor for Guns of the Old West Magazine. And today we're going to be taking a look at one of the underrated classics of the Civil War, the Star Single Action. Well, we all know about Colts and Remingtons, but they weren't the only six guns in the Civil War or the only six guns out west in the Captain Ball era. Uh, the Star Revolver was uh, invented by Ebenezer T. Star, and he originally made a double action version. Uh, and that was sold to the Union Army, but in 1863, they were a little unhappy with the double action, and they requested a redesign as a single action, which Starr did, and he eventually sold 32,000 of them to the Union forces. The double action model, which, uh, which you see here, I've had for about 10 years, and I've got to say, I've had nothing but trouble with it. Uh, right now it has a broken handspring. I don't think I ever got it through a course of fire. But I continue to play with it because it's very cool. Obviously, if you saw the movie Unforgiven, you saw that that's what Clint Eastwood was carrying. Uh, but it's been a pretty unreliable six-gun for me, though I understand they were pretty good in the 19th century. Now, the single-action star, that's another kettle of fish entirely. That's been a fantastic six-gun. I've also had that one for 10 or 12 years, and it, it has done very well. Uh, I'm going to show you a few features of it, and then we'll lit them up and we'll shoot them. Well, here's the Star Revolvers, the single action and the double action version. And as I said, the double action version was actually the original, uh, followed by the single action version. It's, it's kind of interesting. Now, it actually is very comfortable in your hand, and it has a very smooth action. As you can see, the cylinder is not turning because the handspring broke. Uh, while I was while I was working on this, uh, it's it's kind of a, an interesting setup. And if I can get this, here we go, get it cocked with that broken spring in it. The uh, the actual firing mechanism in single action that can be fired single or double action is this little piece right here, which is a secondary trigger. And when you press that back, that's what that's what fires it. Now you can you can certainly fire it. Let's see if we got that right. You can fire it by pulling the regular trigger, and what it what it does is it goes back and it connects with the auxiliary trigger and fires it. But it'll fire strictly in double action mode all day long. Now, kind of the bad thing about this is, like uh, like Colts, and I don't know if I can get this zoomed in enough so that you can effectively see it, but we'll try. You see this little notch right here on the hammer nose? Well, that's the rear sight. And you line that up with the front sight, and life is nice, right? And, and of course, anybody with any common sense would deepen this. But the thing is, exactly how sensible is a hammer nose sight on a double action revolver? I mean, it's not like you can get a good sight picture off of it, right? I mean, uh, that, that to me is just an amazing thing. So pretty obviously this thing was made to, to be shoot, shot fast from the hip, unaimed, and off you go. Now the single action has the, the same sort of sighting arrangement, but of course you actually can hold a sight picture with single action before you fire it. Now another feature that I want to show you on this is you can see that there are extra cylinder stops. And there is one between each, each set of nipples. And that's because... Uh, back in the 19th century, cap and ball guns were carried fully loaded. So a six-shooter was actually a six-shooter. Uh, people would have thought it was crazy giving up one shot on a gun that takes so long to load. So we didn't get into the whole load five and put the hammer down on an empty chamber until we got into the cartridge era. So what you would do with this is you would lower the hammer between cylinders and the, the bolt stop would actually go up into one of those spare grooves. And the cylinder then would be all locked up and you'd be safe to, to fire. Now these days, as you'll see when I test in the test firing, I'm only going to load five. And, and the reason I'm going to do that is not because I think that's unsafe, because I don't. I think that is perfectly safe. And, uh, and I feel quite good doing that. However... In the magazine, when I have uh, even explained that to people, I've received hate mail like you wouldn't believe, telling me how unsafe it is. So rather than be unsafe or scare anybody, I will continue to load five with cap and ball revolvers 
uh, on videos. But I think some of these guns have excellent safety features from the 19th century that still work just as well today. And this is one of them. Now I'm just going to show you one other, one other little thing here in the shop before we get out to the range. The Star Single Action is an excellent pointing six gun. It handles beautifully. And about the only knock handling wise that I can make on it is it has an extremely long reach to the hammer. So as you can see, unless my thumb grows about two inches, I can't reach that hammer without shifting position. And that's kind of bad. Now, certainly, two hands, which nobody shot with, uh, except in the rarest of cases back in the 19th century, you can whack it, but that's what you, you pretty much have to do to shoot it smoothly. So when you're shooting this, it's going to recoil up and you got to grab it and bring it down. In, in practice it doesn't work too bad, but it is just a little bit more awkward than say a Colt or a Remington. Other than that, this is a great shooting six gun. It feels very good, it balances very naturally. It's, this pawl helps to keep it firmly in, in place in your hand. Uh, so let's, let's kind of get out to the range and um, see, see what it'll do. The Star Revolver, particularly the single action, was extremely popular during the Civil War. In fact, this was the third most issued revolver. Colts were number one, then Remingtons, then Stars. And uh, you just don't see enough of these. Uh, there were a lot of them in the war. Plenty of them went to the western frontier. And it's really a different sort of action. This is actually a hinged action. I'm going to put it on half cock. There's a knurled screw back here. You unscrew this. When you do, you can break the action apart and take the cylinder out for cleaning, which uh, which really is fantastic, I will tell you. That's a little bit of a pain to get back in, but not that much. So there we go. Back together, put the screw back in, and your gun is good to go. It's actually much easier to clean than a Colt or a Remington design. So we'll load it up and uh, we'll take it out for, for a test drive. Basically, you load a star the way you do Remington or Colt single action. You put it on half cock so you can spin the cylinder. We're going to use a powder flask with a 30 grain measure. So, get that measure full. We dump it into a chamber. Take a 454 inch diameter ball. Get the rammer down on it. And seat it. There we go. We kind of jerked the, uh, the camera a bit. So we'll do one more. Alright, so we've got 30 grains of powder. And pour it in. Take a round ball. Rotate it under the rammer. And seat it. And there we go. So we'll do that with five chambers. Okay, once we have all five balls loaded, the next step is to seal the chamber mouths with uh, grease black powder lube. And we'll do that on all five. I'll get it good and sealed. Okay, we've got all five chambers sealed up with grease. Now we're going to cap it. And we'll use a Ted Cash uh, inline capper. One of, one of the beauties of this design is it's quite easy to get a capper on here. So we'll just rotate that around. And we'll just pop a cap on. There we go. As you can see, you can see we're very accessible here to the nipples or cones, whatever you like to call them. I grew up calling them nipples, but I guess in the 19th century more often they called them cones. We'll do that five times. Oh, we got one more to go. These head cast cappers keep her from fumbling around. So okay, so we've got five loaded. All right, we're gonna bring it up. Put our empty chamber under the hammer. So now we're safe, fully loaded and safe. All right, as you can see, I've got a bit of a reach to get to the hammer.
ordinarily I'm a slow shooter, but that long reach of the hammer makes me glacially slow. And here's the loser's view of the gunfight.